Well, we said we were going to start at 11 a.m. Eastern time. I made you wait 10 minutes. So April Fools, it was really scheduled for 11.15. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> um, this is Bags with GP and JFDI and our quarterly update with our friend, the Cookie Monster. Hey, Cookie. Fireworks. Hey, guys. How are you doing? <laughs> Good to be on a call with you again. Yeah, man. Um, I, I I feel like it. There's no time in between when we um, go so long without talking to us, but it goes by so fast. Like it seems forever, but it goes by so fast. So it's always mm -hmm. always great to have you on, Cook. Um, we love love talking with you. Love getting your perspective. Mm -hmm. um, but but how how you been? How is everyone? Uh, I, hey, I've been fine. And just just on what you said about time going really, really quickly between the calls, this time felt like forever. I'll be honest yeah. with you. You know, it, it was December when we when I was on last, but this time it felt really long. And 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 I was just thinking about why that is, and it could be because everybody's been waiting for a pullback. <laughs> so I think so. I think we're all just more um, like waiting for stuff. And because we we're waiting for stuff, it just seemed like time went just went on, went on forever. Um, this is accurate. Yeah. There's a lot of things that haven't moved since December. So. Yeah. <laughs> right, and uh, you know, you look at you look at the queue. You got the queues up there. It's been it's been in the same spot for six weeks now, right? And if you just go down a couple of dollars, as GP just said, it's been there for like two months, over two months now. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's gone really slow, to be honest. But, I mean, under the surface, there's been more action, of course, in some of the names. But uh, the indices have been a bit flat. But I think there's a good reason for that, technically. Not just, uh, you know, exhausted and uh, consolidated. But, it's, it, you know, prices are flat at levels that make a ton of sense. Like SPY 520, QQQ 440, around this area. Um, I mean, I think if we think about, if we think back to, Calls we had in September of last year, when we talked about QQQ 440 at that point, mm -hmm. that was before the market corrected in the summer of last year. So 440 was always going to be a tough nut. And 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 520 is, you know, corresponds with that. And we'll see why on the VIX later, maybe during the call as well. But I think there's lots of reasons why the market was going to struggle here. Um, and, it you know, it was one of my two windows for where the market could just go nowhere for two or three months. Uh, I'm hoping we get through this here with, with just this consolidation and continue higher. But, but anyway, I don't know what you asked me earlier. <laughs> no, I was just, I was just asking how everyone was. <laughs> so okay, I, I'm fine. Over to you, guys. We're, we're we're getting all the you know <laughs> the the housekeeping out of the way. With I'm great. Yeah, how are okay. you? I'm good. How's the family, okay. etc. Excellent. Sorry, uh, guys. I forgot. No, it's 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 quite all right. I'm really rusty um, at this. You can tell. We we are going to touch on our uh, stock picks or three X ETF picks a little later. Yeah, I know um, you hate that. I know you didn't. Well, like that well, <laughs> it, no, it's okay. We don't hate it. Uh, I I agreed to let you do it, um, but next okay. time I think we're all going to have to be on the same amount of leverage, which is none. Yeah, just but you blew us away, Cookie. <laughs> Just SMA, just go with semiconductor index, boys. That's it. I'm good. Yeah. I'm good with you. Could have just taken that. Would have been no, the same. You, I, I, I will I won't change your pick for you. You said Soxel. Okay. So I'll, I'll okay. All right. I'm a man right. of my word. The new one. If there's a if there's if there's a chance to pick another one, I'll uh I'll do it. I'll have a go. I'm not very good at stop picking. I'm not as good as you guys. I'm not well, stop picking. How, how how about you think about it and maybe at the end of the week come back to me oh, and no, we will we will do it. our quarterly update for this quarter. I've, I've already got it. I've already got a random random pick. So wow. uh, I can share that with you later. You, you, no yeah, you can save that for us for later. Okay. Um, <laughs> but no, Cookie, it's it's great to have you. Um, I was just telling you before we we started the call for everyone else. Um, I've I've been watching crypto a lot lately. I know you have too. Uh, we had some back and forth the other day mm -hmm. on uh, Bitcoin and Bitcoin dominance and ETH to Bitcoin pairs. Um, I don't, I don't want to jump straight into crypto, but it's having a little bit of a shake today. And I think that's good, uh, for, you know, for a little bit of pullback to get some lower cost crypto. I, I, I'm going to presume you're in the same boat as me that 
we're not going to zero on this quite yet, and we're still probably meet on the bone to the to the upside. Yep, yeah, I'm with you. All right, um, guys, you got any anything that uh, you want to hit Cookie with, or I'm gonna let him take over the show. Oh, <laughs> really? Shit. I mean, I, yeah, no, I'm I'm totally game for that. I just looking at like the the indices, it's kind of like. The Q's range on the daily definitely looks better to me than, let's say, the SPY, where the SPY has just been kind of melting. IWM's got plenty of room between here and 200. Like, I, 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 I'm I, with you, Cookie. I kind of hope we hold within here and take mm -hmm. off higher rather than, hey, than the, Nick, the opposite. But, yeah, take, ma take maybe, it over. Maybe um, before, before we do that, you said you like the cues better than the spy. Um, I might take the other side of that, short at least short term. Okay. Um, but I'm I'm curious as as to why you think spy looks worse than the cues. Cues look even more the flat sp than the spy on the daily. From like a from a no, let's say it, let's say having a no position on. I think the cues look like they have a better risk reward entry based on just how it's moved a little bit more sideways here over the last probably a month and a half versus like the spies that just kind of continues to melt. It's hard for me to like, it's hard for me to define risk if I don't have a very clear level to define, or at least to tell me where I'm wrong or where at least it's That's telling fair. me that I'm wrong. And in a, like, when a when a when a when, no matter the chart, whatever chart it is, when it begins to melt, and when I say melt, I mean exactly what the spy looks like since basically November, where it just kind of grinds along the two the twenty day. Mm -hmm. It's great. Like there are there are guys that are great at buying like those trend line taps every time. I'm just not one of those. <laughs> I'm not one of those traders. So. I think that there's a better, again, for me, there's a better risk reward entry in either the Qs or the IWM, even than the SPY in particular. And I'm not saying it doesn't, I'm not saying it looks bad. I'm just, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I agree I with mean, you, Nick. If you're if you're looking at the Nasdaq composite as a uh, as as a better kind of indication, because if this goes up, the Qs are going to rail, and this right. is literally just six seven weeks at at all-time highs from 2021 just consolidating and and stair stepping higher so this hasn't even broken out and if this breaks out it's a broad-based rally it's probably gonna lend more towards the cues and the spies as well what's your take you uh there cookie the cues am, am i the silly one that thinks the spy daily looks better than the cues daily I think this. I think this. You know, um, technically it does. I think the spy does look better than the cues, but um, but from a from a from where they are structurally, this makes sense. They're in the same place, right? Right. They're both. They're both at monthly resistances. They're both at key weekly monthly resistances. So they'll they'll leave together, and you know, Q will outperform pretty sure. And going back, going to what uh, GP just said. Um, you know, with 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 um, the broader index, certainly more space for 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 tech to to push higher and 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 when the markets do move, tech does outperform anyway, right? You'd yeah. expect it to once again, out, you know, tech will outperform QQQ will outperform SPY on the move up and it will outperform on the way down as well. So, uh, you know, once this consolidation is done, I'd sooner be more. I'd sooner hold more tech than 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 uh, yeah. just the general index. Yeah. yeah, I don't disagree with that. Um, think, all right, let's hop right into it, Cookie. We've oh, had okay. a lot of questions for you <laughs> in regards to the VIX. I don't yeah. know if you you you. Uh, I know you could spend an entire day on talking about the VIX, I but could. maybe you can, yeah. maybe you can give us uh, five or ten minutes of. Uh, some insight on the VIX. I know uh, Nacho Libre yeah. on Stock Twits has asked a lot about this over the past few quarters, um, okay. just as an indicator. So I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay. Unless um, you want me to pull up a VIX chart and you can go through it. 
Nah, not really. <laughs> I was going to say, I, I, I suspect. I think, I think um, just on what you just said about could spend a whole day talking about the VIX, I think, oh, let me share my screen then. Um, just give me a sec. Oops, I should be good at this, but I'm not. Just wait. Let me get something up. I'll put the VIX. Well, I was going to say I was going to put the VIX chart up, but what I'll do instead is... And just like cook stuff, share screen, just one second, right? Share my desktop, we're good. All right, so there's nothing there really that's interesting. It's just the, it's just the spy daily. But what I, what I was going to say is, um, given that there's so much that one could say about the VIX, rather than trying to cherry pick something that might be interesting for Nacho Libre, uh, I don't know if he plays, I don't know if he's a wrestler, but anyway, Nacho Libre. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, maybe it's better that, I do what I was thinking, which was to just weave in to the story something related to the VIX about where the markets are right now. Yeah, and and I think by doing that, it'll that that context will be more useful for 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 Nacho and whoever's li whoever's listening, and and maybe over time you start building up this knowledge of what are the key insights related to the VIX that help me understand the market better, right? Because I think context is everything always, right? So just. You know, for example, you can use the VIX range, blah, blah, blah. That might not be as useful as just saying, this is how the VIX looks now, and this is how it might be useful in deciding what happens next in the market. So we, maybe we'll do that way instead. Yeah, that, however you want to take it. All right, okay. Let me have a drink of vodka first. Actually, just water. I'm just joking. Mm. <laughs> well, it's, it's very hot It's here. late there. Is it, are you sure it's just it's, water? Um, it, it is just water, unfortunately, but um, it's forty degrees here. It's effing hot. Uh, <laughs> come over if you want, if you like that. But it's very, very <laughs> hot here. So uh, try to keep keep hydrated. Drink lots of water during the day. But um, back to the charts. Um, okay. So what what I, what I plan to do for maybe fifteen or twenty minutes or so, and and I would love for this to be as participative with 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 the rest of you guys as well. So do jump in, do butt in, and I'm more than happy to. You know, we have a discussion about any of the points. Okay. But um, what I thought we could do is, you know, I, I'm thinking back to some of the discussions that we had in December and even in September last year. And 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 it goes on, builds on a little bit of what um, GP has said in the past, which is lockout rally. Right. And, I, you know, from, from back in December and, and even in January, when we saw the markets pushing high and, and GP said it many, many times that, you know, the market is not going to give you an opportunity to get back in, not easily anyway. Um, and so all of this talk of crashes and 5% corrections and, well, even, you know, modest 5% corrections might not happen, right? And I guess that was the sentiment amongst you as a group as well, the three of you, that we might not get those discounts and pullbacks as we thought. Um, and the reason I'm talking about this is one of the reasons I think that people have struggled a little bit in the market. We talk about mindset all the time. We talked about it in December as well. And I spend so much time on the discussions with the group that I have just building the mindset. And I do so much work in that line with regards to, you know, what, you know what, what's the baseline that the market would need to do in order to remain, let's say, bullish, bull market, bull trends and all that stuff. What would make it exceed that and what would make it underperform that? And then we start coming up with these different, very simple variables, including the VIX and including things like daily moving averages and stuff to try and help center our minds such that if the market did do what it actually did, that it wouldn't catch us off guard and we wouldn't be saying, this is a once in a 50 year event and we've got to get out and you know bearish divergence this and all that stuff. And I think one of the reasons why so many people have struggled over the last two or three months is because a lot of what happened caught them completely off guard. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Right? No. Yeah. <laughs> we weren't caught off. <laughs> well, no, no, a lot of people, uh, the, the masses. No, but a lot of people were, and 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 the thing but, is, even though, but people have been since almost like uh, June twenty twenty two. Like it, yeah. it's not just a phenomenon over the last six months. It's been uh, I, I've been arguing downtrend versus sideways since yeah. June twenty twenty two, right? And so sideways is. Yeah, to me, it's uh, it's been going on a lot longer, but yeah, it's people are still but, dumbfounded by what's going on. But but the a lot of their stocks aren't coming back at any point in time. Agree with agree with you. But the, the point I'm trying to make here is, 
even when you think about like the, the bull market start, let's say starting the summer of last year, uh, let, you know, end of 2020, October 2022, around here. So I'm pointing to the chart here. Um, look at how look at the price action in this phase here. And then, yeah, so this is all around uh, the banks blowing up and um, like the, the government shutdowns and all that rubbish in the news and stuff. You got a lot. You got modest volatility during this time here, but then the market went. You know, let's call it, you know, relatively speaking, vertical up. Then you had the correction during the summer, but after the summer, so from October, this looks nothing like what preceded it. Has there's zero relationship between what happened after the correction and what preceded it? Very, there's nothing like it on this chart. It's a breakout, anyway. though, right? It's a it's breakout, a, it, and a two-year right. consolidation. But this is what I mean by they weren't expecting that. So whilst you say you had this continuation with what happened from the summer of 2022, the market changed character. And 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 so that's why, going back to what we were saying earlier in the call, that from December, everybody's been looking for this correction because before this period, that's what we got. We had these pullbacks of 3 or 4% every couple of months or every month or so, in fact. It just didn't happen this time around. So why did that? Why didn't we get them? Why is it different this time around? And we can say, well, it's a breakout, but why is this breakout different? Right. And, and these are the type of things that if we dig under the surface and we look at, then we start comparing patterns in the market with what's got, you know, it, it, was there anything that could have led us to believe that this move higher in the market was going to be like this as opposed to a shitty uptrend like we had before the summer of last year with ups wow. and downs, ups and downs like that? And and the answer is yes, there is, and it comes down to looking at patterns and how the market has moved over the last bunch of years. But um, <clears throat> and and the reason I'm the reason why I'm, I'm making a point of this as well is because unless we understand this now, we'll continue to look for. And I'm saying we, as in everybody, not not me and you, but people will continue to look for reasons why the market needs to stall now and why it can't continue to go up another ten percent. And so I think if going back to this idea of mindset and stuff again, right, unless we're able to, you know, actually, here's a great analogy. It's um, the movie Inception. You've all seen it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where <clears throat> the dream within a dream within a dream, right? And unless you get to that sixth dream down and affect that dream, that, that, that highest level in the brain, everything else that flows from it will try and get you out of the market. Yeah. <laughs> That's the Makes truth. Sense? I was right, so going to say that, like, when you were asking about what's, you know, was this unexpected, I, I kind of think that if you layer <laughs> the charts with kind of like just what's going on, even in like the most recent, let's say, year, two years, three years, you could probably. So, let's just say GP is calling for this lockout rally. What mm -hmm. would be the reason to really like think that there's a lockout rally coming? I mean, it, it could be as sim like as simply put as 2022 did a phenomenal job at absolutely scaring everybody out similar to actually similar to 2008. I don't think we've seen the type of fear in the markets, at least from my perspective, since 2008 to 2022, I thought 2022 was even worse. So mm -hmm. like for me it, to say like for, I don't know what I'm trying to argue here other than just saying that like for GP or bags, I'll say like, dude, we got a, a lockout rally coming in my mind. That, that's the logic that I would be following and saying, okay, yeah, this is why the lockout is coming is because it's going to take a while now for people to, to really get on board with this train. I don't know. I'll just throw that out there. What do you think GP? Why do I think a lockout rally was coming? Yeah. Uh, quite a few reasons, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, 2008, 2009 comparison is my, in my view, the same. We were talking about a, a re recession after the goal, uh, great financial crisis. Yeah. During this whole period, um, I think what like people are confused or want the indices to get a 60 70% correction to get those. Yeah. Yeah. And we've talked about this <laughs> numerous times, right? 
to get those, you have to have the second leg to drop. If we had gone into a recession and the economy was getting weaker, which there was no indication at the time that it was getting weaker in 2022, 2023, it looked like it was getting stronger. Consumers were still spending. Um, and, and so there, the, to me, you have to have a secondary catalyst to get you that second leg down, right? In 2008, 2009, everything looked like it was stable and then Lehman dropped, right? And Bear Stearns yeah. dropped. And yeah. that was that's what accelerated to the downside. All those dip buyers became sellers to the downside. Was 2022 worse than 20, 2008, 2009? I wholeheartedly disagree because mm -hmm. the economy was in a shambles, right? People weren't able to uh, afford eating, forget like the stock market or anything. So in 2022, maybe the stock market was doing shit, but everyone's personal accounts were doing pretty well still, right? So it wasn't this, There, were, that's that's what kind of caused me- If to they were it. industry tied. Yeah, but you also have, you yeah. have a major, major monetary regime shift going on. It's going to take decades for this to unfold, right? So what you're seeing is the indices rallying up, but many stocks not, right? Because people have options to invest their money outside of equities right now. So if for some reason we get a crisis and they drop interest rates back to zero, all these crap ass stocks that, that are still unprofitable, not knowing what the monetary regime shift, this is more macro side, forget the technical, they're gonna they're gonna start to rally again. But if interest re rates remain where they are and going higher or staying flat, then these these stocks continue to struggle, and that's the bifurcation that you're seeing in the markets. Indices are going bananas, yet people who are holding Tesla, people who are holding um, Wayfair, whatever you want to like, what you, whatever you want to talk about, is these guys aren't participating because these these are these are just not part of the current cycle, right? They may come and join us in the next cycle or whatever it is, but not yeah, right now. Yeah. Right. I agree with all of that. I agree with all of that. And I think what you just mentioned about some of these names under the surface, I think their time is yet to come and it might be quite soon. I'm, you know, and I think having heard you guys talk on pods recently as well, <clears throat> you're seeing this breath expansion as well. And I think you're seeing all of these bases ready to pop higher. Maybe they haven't done so yet, not all of them. Um, but maybe that's going to happen in the next few months, right? And but just 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 on the just on the chart, going back on, from a technical point of view as to why the, the market may have done what it did, is because that's what it does. This is not unusual. Because when you because because I start off looking at the looking at the chart like that, and you say, well, it looks unusual compared to what happened in the last two years. And we go back to what we said earlier about cycles, and this was the end of a period, and maybe this is the beginning of a new one. If you just zoom out a little bit, you say, well, actually, now this doesn't look that unusual after all, because it looks like what's on the left of the chart. So you end up with this parenthesis of a couple of years, you know, uh, you know, following COVID, you've got uh, the Russian invasion, and then you have inflation and so on which gives you this period in the market and now as that gets settled and resolved i'm not saying russia's being resolved yet but certainly the supply chain issues associated with that and with the china shutdown new supply routes were opened so in vietnam and india and other, and other places as well companies went you know out of their way to try and reorganize manage costs and so on and you see the market hope you know certainly recovering and looking more like what it would normally look like in a bull market and 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 I think, especially maybe especially because so many people love to trade zero and one day to expiry options, mm -hmm. that they they they're unable to think about what happened before twenty twenty two, or you know twenty twenty one. They just don't remember this. So when you when you factor that in, you say, well, this is normal. Maybe it's slightly steeper than normal. Let me let me explain what I mean. Right? So for me we could have had something like this as baseline like that right and then what you end up with is something which is hold on so let me get another one something which exceeds baseline and we could talk about the reasons why that was the case but when you think about this line over here that's probably no different to the gradient that you have back over here or maybe maybe this is the baseline you see what i'm what i'm trying to get at so you've got a market which does that 
And then what you see in 2024, after the correction in the summer, is a market that, well, it's certainly exceeding that. So it's stronger than what it's done in the past, but it doesn't make it unusual in the sense of what markets, what, what bull markets look like. And, and so when people are talking about these five or six percent corrections and stuff, they just don't remember what happened before. And even here, prior to COVID, there was a period of even steeper price action. Right. Yeah, the end of 2019 was so strong. It was incredibly strong. And if you go I, back and so, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I think the recency bias is a real thing that a lot of yeah, market 100%. participants get caught up in. Yeah. Um, and we can't get over there. I mean, just look from, you know, if you can go that's back what to 2016. I, that's all I was. Right. Um, there's quite a bit of market volatility to the downside. And if we fast forward to even people who got introduced into the market into 2020, there's a lot of pitfalls in there as opposed to sort of smoothing it out to the upside over the course of time, right? And I think that's the the combination. I've called it miserable bear theory and before, like they're too scared to buy, they're never going to buy. But mm -hmm. it, it's a lot. It's a lot because of the recency bias, and a lot of people's market memory doesn't go back to even 2016. It goes back from 2020 onward, right? With the mm -hmm. invention and adoption of Robinhood and all these other weebles and all, all these other ways to make the market more accessible to everyone. So right. it, it comes. It comes to the point of fact that it's recency bias, and when a dip happens. It's, oh, it's got to go lower. Well, no, right. it doesn't have to go lower. Or, oh, we're going to go up forever. Well, we'll over the long period of time, we're going to go up forever. But you see how many dips there are in that chart. And mm -hmm. um, I, one other point, just tangentially to when you pulled all the way back to the early 2010s, um, Cookie, I, I, I got to point out that you're – higher high and lower low and lower high and higher low this chart just sort of eviscerates all that you know brain mumbo mumbo talk in people's heads mm -hmm. of look how many lower lows there are uh to get all of a sudden be rejected and and go higher so anyway that was just another point that i wanted to throw out while i was looking at this chart, like you can pick out several lower lows that reverse yeah. higher. Right. And it's, uh, it's not like you have to have three or four or five, or it keeps going lower. Um, right. It, it, so, it gets, it gets smoothed out over the course of time. Right. So let me just expand on this period in the chart now. And, and, and because in the end, you know, ultimately we're, we're traders or I'm, a, you know, we're, we're we want to trade a certain amount. And I keep saying, and I've been saying this since the end of last year, I've got to reduce the amount of trading because if the market is going to do what I think it could do, which is what you know we all thought it could do, then it makes less sense to trade so much, right? Let, let the trend do the work. Let the, let the market do the work for you. So trade less. And especially when you're seeing intraday volatility, which is very modest, which might shake people out of positions, but the market grinds higher longer term. It just doesn't make sense to take that risk sometimes, right? But and again, I'm not saying people shouldn't day trade, but there's probably a better balance than maybe there was during this period here where you are going to get far more volatility. But let me let me show you one of the charts now. Now, I think it's this one here. Nope. Well, yeah, let's start with this one. Let's start with this one. So this is a chart that I've shared on stock twists. And and it, it it answers the question, why is this steeper than 2020? Why is it steeper than some of these previous periods where, where this line was from? And, and the simple answer is we're at the end of a parabolic move. So as you get closer to the right-hand side of this parabolic move, you would expect prices to be a lot steeper if they're going to hold that parabola. Otherwise, you're not going to hold it, right? So the parabola in itself just forces prices to move higher. Now, that's a very top-level you know, you might like it, you might not like that sort of explanation, but certainly it gives credence to why the market might push much higher or much faster this time around than what it's done maybe on some of the previous moves up. And when you start factoring in this idea that, well, if AI is different to what we've seen before, then it would make sense that everything is faster than it was in the past anyway. And, and here we come back, here, there's a circular argument here, which is those who don't believe the market is, should do what it's doing 
are also the same people who don't believe AI is anything, right? And so you'll tend to find those people who dismiss what's going on in the market now are also the same people who think that AI is a fad and is just chatbots and LLMs and stuff. And 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 so what I would say is, well, start start off with a chart because I would normally start with a chart and say, well, does it make sense for from a perspective of what's going on in the outside world? And if AI does have the promise to deliver what people are saying, which is a tech, you know, again, you know, AI isn't new. And I know people have said this, you know, AI has been around for 40 years and stuff. But what makes it different is the compute. We've never had the computing power that we've had in the last two years ever. And it's getting exponentially faster. And that exponential compute is what's unlocking some of the steepness in the markets. Now that's you know to try to bring together what's going on in the outside world with why the market might move exponentially, but just on a pattern point of view, and I think I have the chart here. Let me see, um, is it this one? Just wait. Oh, no, it's not here, but I'm going to open it. It's the. Let me just see if I can do that. Yes, this way. Roadmap. Now this is a chart that I shared on Stock Twits in December. You might remember it. It's a little bit more detailed now. And what this does is it breaks down exactly why the market is doing what it's doing right now. So I'm going to I'm going to talk you through it, right? So it's a chart that I've shared in the past, and basically the idea here is symmetry around periods of volatility and unrest in the market. So let me just just start on the right hand side of the chart here first. You've got this you've got this yellow over you've got this yellow ellipse, which is the bear market, and then you have this correction in the summer that we had last year. And either side of that, you have symmetrical legs in the market. So this was 2020, and this was following COVID. You had this very strong move up, which lasted 18 months. And what I'm like, what I'm looking for, what I was looking for back in December was the same leg up following this period of unrest in the market. So as we finish that period, you know, as we finish this, everybody gets shaken out for three years. It's very horrible. It's very difficult. All the indices are well, even here, the indices weren't doing great. But you know, there's a lot of volatility in the in, even at the index level and underneath. Well, you can imagine, right? Um, but the reason why I thought the market would do this is because this is what it's done in the past. If you think about what happened, if we go back to 2009 and what you mentioned earlier, I think GP said, you know, <clears throat> the market is doing similar to what it did after following the bottom in 2009. This, these green bands, this band E, which is the set, you know, basically I've labeled them correspondingly to the two different cycles here. So what you have here is this band E was identical in slope and gradient and duration to what preceded to what preceded that period of unrest which was 2000 this was brexit grexit and the trump election so around that period there was similar unrest in the market to what we had this time around caused by inflation so different different narratives but same effect in the market so the market wants to go up but something's pulling it back for all sorts of reasons and this time around it happens to be inflation war in russia China's ch shut down, COVID effect, after effects, and all the rest of it. But what you see here is ma the market, from a technical point of view, is repeating the same uptrend as it did following COVID. It has the same gradient. So at the time, when, we were, when I put this together back in December, so this is already four months old, and I shared on stock. Actually, if you, if you search on stock tweets, um, cookie nom nom nomics or something, I don't know, hashtag whatever, right? <laughs> I'll find it and I'll post it again if you want, but it's the simplified version of this. And, and at the time, what I was looking for was for the market to do something like this. Now this, so what, in other words, as far as, um, as far as trading is concerned, for the market to repeat what it did prior to the inflation uh, market, uh, sorry, inflation led bear market, all I'm looking for are higher monthly lows. Because I know that back here, back in this period, we had higher monthly lows for a year and a half. So when you start thinking about it from those from that point perspective, then you say, well, the drawdowns are going to be very limited and capped by the lows of the previous month. So now you have a very objective measure for how much the market could pull back in a given month for it to remain in what is the base case for the move up. We hold the previous month's low. Now, if you look at what happened in 2020 over here, you see that you see the strong move up following the COVID bottom. 
And then price basically just grinds its way up. The worst that happened after COVID was this period over here, where we continued to make higher lows, but we saw three months of overlapping candles. So the worst that I'm expecting this time around is that the market goes sideways for two or three months, but it doesn't break the previous month's lows in order for it to sustain the same idea that we had prior to this period in the middle here. Now, if we lose a previous month's low, then we're gonna get a correction, which could take us to the nine monthly moving average. So just based on this very simple setup, uh, I mean, we're, what we've done is we followed this roadmap of this is what we're looking for for the market to do for the next six to 12 months unless one of those conditions are broken. And, and, there, and again, it just goes back to symmetry and patterns of what the market has done in the past. So here, what we're seeing is something, and, and again, this, this uptrend channel has the same gradient as this channel over here that I'm pointing this channel B. So even though what looks to be incredibly strong this year has precedence, but we just nobody remembers because we had this period of shit in between. Over here, we never came down to the nine monthly moving average. Over here, you can, and also look, the nine monthly moving average guards the bottom of the channel, just as it's doing over here. So even in terms of speed, with the nine monthly moving average tracking the bottom of the channel is doing the, exactly the same as what it did in 2020, 2021. It's pretty, pretty amazing when you think about it, right? And so this gives us, from, uh, I would say, a baseline path for what the market's likely to do unless it starts losing a previous month's low. So even with the slight modest volatility that we're seeing today in the market, on this, on this level, on, the, on a monthly time frame, is just not worth worrying about. If we get anywhere near 5,120, which is the previous month's low, then I'll buy that dip. And I've got other weekly pivots in the way. We might not even get down. We might not even go below 5,250, I think. But 5,250 is where we could be maybe tomorrow or something like that if the market continues week today. But even then, that will be a buyable dip versus the previous month's candle, right? And you end up with this, uh, idea where the market is repeating patterns. And again, you know, so it's done this from 2009, it's done these two identical cycles so far. Now, whether this breaks down tomorrow or it gets all the way to 6,000, clearly I don't know. But the benefit of the doubt goes with whilst the conditions hold, the plan holds. And if the conditions are lost, then we reevaluate. So for now, it's been holding that well. We go back to what we said earlier about. Um, the the exponential curve due to due to AI. Well, if any, you know, I remember saying this about 2017 with with uh, crypto and the strong markets and stuff. If anything, AI is magnitudes, you know, orders of magnitude bigger in terms of potential impact than what we've seen in the past. So the market shouldn't do any worse than what it's done in the past. And again, that's another reason why the market isn't giving us the pullbacks that we want. And you know, just on the on the daily chart. In 2021, we had these routine pullbacks to the daily 50 moving average. I don't know if you guys remember. Every, every six weeks, pretty much like clockwork, 50-day moving average in the SPY, for example, or it was the nine-weekly moving average. It's basically the same level. Nine-week nine, nine week moving average, 50-day moving average, pretty, pretty much the same. And we had that every six weeks. This time around, because the market is stronger, we're not going anywhere near the 50-day moving average. We're bouncing at the 20. And it's every time at the same 20-day moving average. So what you're seeing is rather than the market showing that slightly greater weakness that you had in 2021, it's showing, it's showing strength even versus the previous uptrend that we had before this bear market. And you know, just based on you know, whether it's NVIDIA, whether it's AMD, or whether it's whatever, you know, and you know, one of the things that we, we've done as well is we, we try and dedicate at least one or two hours a week to read up on whatever's going on in compute and AI that could affect the markets. And, and it's helped us really focus mindsets as well in, in terms of is what's happening in the market making sense from what's going on in the outside world as well? And when you're reading about the compound annual growth rates, the projected you know, uh, data warehouses and personal computers using AI and wearables and all this stuff, well, if it was ever gonna happen, it's gonna happen in the next two years because the compute is coming online now. It never did before. So people talk about hype curves and innovation and stuff. All that stuff was constrained and contingent upon compute. Now that's happening now. And you see, I don't know if you saw uh, Jensen's you know, last presentation where we talked about Blackwell and it's mm -hmm. a thousand times stronger, uh, more powerful than you know, what they had maybe a year ago. I mean, this stuff is accelerating at exponential speeds. And so all the applications will be exponentially more powerful as well. And that's why maybe you know uh, Tesla's 
all of a sudden able to launch whatever they want to call a supervised full self drive or something, right? Now and not six months ago, because all that c capacity is coming online now. And that's why I think that if anything, the markets, whilst they might give us um, pullbacks, and, and here I think any pullback that we get, it will be meaningless unless there's a catalyst that delivers it. And that goes back to what GP just said a few minutes ago as well. We need a catalyst to give us that pullback. And normally what happens is in a strong market like this, you know, pullbacks which are caused by catalysts get bought up. Unless, of course, they're catalysts which then end up you know, um, uh, with deteriorating data points for the next six months, whether it's unemployment, whether it's inflation or something else. But anything, any news item or anything that scares the market tends to get bought up really quickly in a market that looks like this. So bottom line is, you know, everybody wants dips, but I'm not sure whether this market is going to give you any of those dips. And at best, we might see a market that goes sideways for two months instead of coming down to the nine monthly moving average. Now, let me just get a drink of water first. <laughs> and, yeah, Cookie, uh, I, I love the way uh, not just the pattern is so symmetrical, but even in leg E compared uh -huh. to this leg E, the candles are, I mean, yeah, almost true. identical. And, and yeah. you, you talked about the three months of sideways. Yeah, we, we've yeah. been we've been sideways a little bit. But I mean, we we could still be going through this a little bit further into the summer, right? Like uh, yeah. this 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 shouldn't be uh, time to throw the baby out with the bathwater, so to speak, because you know the market's not going up. You shouldn't you shouldn't trade just because you're bored, right? Agree, agree. I mean, I think that going back to what I mentioned earlier, I think there's two windows here. The market either consolidates at five twenty on spy. Or it consolidates at 565, 563, something like that. So there's these there's these two windows here. So I, maybe we do go sideways for the next one or two months, um, and I'm open to that. That's fine. I mean, as long as we continue to hold the previous month's lows, we could yep. go sideways for the next couple of months until maybe early summer, for example, right? But that's one option. But the other option, which I favor, is that when it goes up to 560. Right? And QQQ gets to 470 or 472 or something like that. And uh, I can show you that on the chart in a second. But the, the, reason, the reason why I think that's possible is if you look at the VIX. So now I'm going to weave back in what the VIX is doing. And the VIX, I think, does hold clues as to whether the market does hold and consolidate here or if it goes to 560. Now, for, the, for, the, for SPY, for example, to go to 560 and QQQ to get to 470, we need the VIX to break lower. It's not going to happen otherwise. So if the VIX holds around these levels, around, around 13 or so, it's going to be much harder for the market to keep going higher if the VIX starts basing here and going up instead. So if you take a look at the, what the VIX has done over the last um, few years, right? So here's a simplified version of the VIX chart that I'm using, right? Now, what you see here, so you've got the COVID spike back in 2020, and then you've got this downtrend channel. And again, this is taken from one of my charts, but you can basically see how the VIX has been rejecting the top of this channel since the COVID highs. But once we started consolidating above this gray channel and below this curve, this was the bear market in 2022, right? So the VIX had a very specific place on the chart during the bear market of 2022 between this channel and underneath this curve. And then you can see it starts breaking down, it starts pulling back as the market starts getting getting uh, getting stronger. But what's interesting here is how, and, and for those of you who don't believe you can chart the VIX and have delicate hearts and weak stomachs, <laughs> and you should turn away, right? So I'm not gonna excuse charting the VIX because some people say you can't do it, but let me just continue the story on here, right? So what, what, what we noticed or what I noticed on the VIX is how you'll often get what uh, you'll get these, for example, these spikes, and you can see it's very routine. You get these, this is a weekly time frame, by the way, right? So you'll get these uh, spikes which last a month, moves up which last a month, and you can see it all across the chart, you know, a month up and a month down, a month up, a month down, and so on. Right? So you get that all the time. But if you notice, what's been happening over the last six months is something a little bit different. So this was the last major spike in the VIX, and this was around what? This is uh, uh, March 2023. 
right? So this was um, around, what was it? The banks, right? So we were talking about the banks blowing up. So this is around that time over there. Over here, this is when uh, uh, Israel was invaded and, and, and then retaliated, right, or fought back. So this was the spike in, <coughs> excuse me, towards the end of you know, uh, Q3 last year. But what you see here is how each of these periods are getting uh, shallower. The impulse is getting shallower and shallower. So you see this very strong spike up. And then even though this period lasts quite long, there's less strength in it. Even though it lasts a long time, there's less strength in it. And if you look at what's happened since January, so this is January to March, it's, it's a proper bear flag. So you can see it doesn't really, it doesn't really, we don't really see the insane spikes that we saw on previous cycles. It's just been consolidating. And so what I'm looking for here, going back to what we said earlier about for the market to get to 560, I want to see the VIX break down, right? I want to see the VIX break lower. And so go, going back to what we were talking about, earlier, what, what I mentioned earlier about having very clear trigger points as to what I think the what I want, what I want to see from the market to be able to follow through a trade plan, right? So as long as the VIX remains below the 50 weekly moving average, I am looking for this bear flag breakdown. Now, you can see right now, the reason why QQQ has gone sideways for three months and why some of those names haven't broken is because the VIX has been holding around this range for the last three months. So now we're getting to that inflection point where the VIX is at the edge of the downtrend channel below the 50 weekly moving average. So it either breaks out over here we get a spike that looks like this, or it gives up and we get the move to SPY 560 and QQQ 470, right? So here I'm able to, you know, uh, so we know we're talking about how can you use the VIX as an indicator and stuff. The starting point is to say, well, normally speaking, you're unlikely to get a market move higher if the VIX is sustaining a move up as well. It's not going to, it's very unlikely that you see that. So you want to see that inverse relationship. So here, going, here I'm, I'm able to come up with a inverse plan based on the VIX saying, well, okay, if I want the market to go up, or if I think the market is going to go up, then the VIX is likely to break down here. And, and why do I think the market might go exponentially up? So this, we haven't talked about this yet, but if the market moves to 560 on SPY and 470 in the queues, it's not going to grind its way there. I think it's going to go vertical there. And the reason why I think it will do that is because as it breaks these support, as it breaks these, you know, moving averages and it fails to break out over here, is going to repeat the leg that we had before the bear flag. It's likely because that's what it does. I mean, that's a bear flag, right? And, and the VIX also does that. So you see this move from A to B, which was from November through to the end of December. So this is the move that I want to see repeated in IWM, in QQQ, in SPY, in Bitcoin, in everything biotech and gold everything so here what you have is well if the vix does this it takes us down to nine and the market goes ballistic or it doesn't and so again here i'm open to both outcomes and i've been saying to the guys as well we've got to remain open to both outcomes maybe the vix holds here and it breaks higher but if it doesn't then i'm not looking for the market to grind to grind high but to go vertically high now as far as trading and positions are concerned i will go all effing in Again, if the VIX breaks down in this way, I don't want to be 50% invested if the market is going to go to 570. I don't want to be partially invested if QQQ goes to 470, for example, right? I want to be all in. I want to be all in when Soxel goes to whatever number it gets to, or when IWM puts on another 20% in the month of January and February, sorry, in the month of April and May, for example, right? So in terms of the end game right now, what I'm thinking, so let me just move on to one other chart, which I have over here, right? Um, QQQ, for example, right? So this is a chart that we looked at in September of last year. It's the same chart. You remember? <laughs> it's on. We've, I've talked about it so many times on your call. So we finally get through to this edge of this band C, right? And so I'm looking for 467 on the Qs. So whilst we hold the breakout, so this modest move down to start the month looks like this on the monthly time frame. It's hardly anything, is it? You can hardly see the candle, it's tiny. So I'm allowing for the VIX to move slightly higher to the 50 weekly moving average, for example, or maybe the nine weekly moving average or something, whatever it was on that chart. And it allows Qs to back test and hold the previous month's low, which was 432. So as long as we hold around 437, this might be the, all the dip that we get in the month of April. And then from here, we go from 437 to 467, which is what, $30 or about 6 or 
and Spy will do something similar. We'll get to 466. And I can show you that in a second as well. Let me just do that very quickly as well, just to complete this part of the exercise. And then we can talk about something else if you want. Just wait one sec. Uh, Spy monthly 1.0. I think it's this one. Let's see. No, it's not that one. It was the other one I wanted to show you. This one revised. Okay, so this is the same chart. Hold on. Oh, shit. Hey, where's all that? All these curves come from? This way. Let me get rid It's not that one. This way. <laughs> so I've got so many versions of this. Oh, hold on. It is. I don't know why it's adding all of these, but let me get rid of... I'm going to leave them there. It doesn't matter. Let's just leave them there. It doesn't matter. Um, so this is the parabola that we looked at on the on the original version of this chart. That's had the number one, the number two, the number three at the bottom, right? Now, so that's what we've been following up. I can also draw a channel based on the same parabola and you end up with the tops. As you can see, so the top of the, 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 the 2021 all-time highs actually hits the top of this channel formed by this parabola here and it comes all the way back down to the bottom of the same channel, right? Um, but four, six, five, six, six on Qs, which is here, is an extremely important pivot because it connects, again, the all-time highs in 2021. See that on the orange, bottom of the orange channel. But if you go all the way back to 2000 and something, all the way back to 2008 and 2000, this is where the bear market, that second leg that GP talked about earlier, the second leg down after Bear Stearns or whatever it was, right? It happened on losing this orange channel. And you can see over here back in 2000, sorry, in 1998, it was a vicious, a vicious dip to that bottom of the orange channel before going back up again and making new all-time highs. So there's an, there's an insane amount of importance embedded in the bottom support of this orange channel. And that's why if the market goes higher in the next two months, that's my target because it has such significance historically going back over 20 years. So as long as we hold this, uh, what we said, around 520, right? So, it, I mean, it could come down a little bit further. It could come down to even 510. Let me show what the back test would be in the month of April like that. 510.5. And again, it just holds the previous month's low by a little bit. But I think, I'm not sure we'll get that far down. But in any case, 520-ish. If we hold around this level over here, then chances are we'll go pretty quickly. Maybe in the next two months, we'll get to 566. Uh, so maybe in the month of May or something, we'll get to this level. And this is where I think we will see the market pull back more considerably, or at least go sideways for two or three months. Not unlike what it did, let's say, I don't know, like this, this period over here. Right. You see, uh, you see this period over here, three or four months where the market does that. It doesn't break. I mean, it breaks down because of the bear market that follows. Right. But but certainly volatility around the underbelly of that orange channel over there. So that's what I'm thinking. So just just to summarize, basically, the VIX leaves a door open for the market to push higher to 560s on SPY and 470s in the queues as long as it breaks down below the 50 weekly moving average. And as long as the market doesn't go below, let's say 510 or the previous month's low, then going back to what we said earlier on uh, in the discussion, there's no reason why the market will continue to do what it did in 2020 and push strongly higher into this 570 area that we talked about earlier. So this is, I mean, this has been really our roadmap for the last four months. And that's why I'll come on and stop this and I'll have a bit of a joke and a laugh about all the traders and stuff on there. But in my mind, we're just following this path that we've been looking at since, what, for the last four or five months or so. So, um, you know, my job has been twofold. One is to try and evaluate where the market might go, but how it might get there, because it's the how it gets there that that decides the trade. What's the volatility going to be like? What the what might the lows look like? What the VIX might look like along the way? Because that will give us opportunities to scale in and scale out, and also to get the F out if it doesn't work out, right? And um, and and that's why you know one of the reasons I've been saying to the guys on on, on the Slack site is, you know, there's an opportunity for us to make a boat ton of money, a boatload of money in the next, you know, during this market, because we saw the possibility that the market would go vertical a few months ago, just like what you guys did. And, um, and yeah, I mean, so far it's been excellent. <laughs> it's been fun and it's been pretty, it's been pretty remarkable. I think. It definitely has. Yeah. <laughs> you want to see one more thing? Yeah, of course, cookie. We, we value the time with you. So yeah. Uh, Okay, I'll show you one other thing. I think I have it here. No, let me see. We we run. We have about ten more minutes left, and I do okay. want to go over our quarterly stock picks. Oh, okay, then uh, I won't. Then I then I won't bother. Then I won't. Yeah, no, 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 you you can do this. We got time. We've got ten minutes. 
Are you sure? I don't know. Okay, okay. So I've got I, 10 I just, minutes. If you have 10 minutes, Cookie. I, this is going to take me one minute to do. I'll just do it very, very quickly. Right. So uh, the, the point I want to make here, so you see this horrible red candle like we're seeing today in the market, 5284. So it looks pretty nasty and everyone's having a nightmare. But you know, one of the things that we looked at is how, how has this uptrend looked since November? And you get these shakeouts routinely every month or every two weeks where you get a 1% pullback in the market and the market doesn't die. Right. Now, clearly, this time could be different. But as far as projecting what the market is, has done, you know, remember, the market has been incredibly strong since November. But despite that, we are seeing modest volatility every now and then. And you see this long red candles over here, the same long red candles over the same move. And the way that I've structured the channels here gives me an idea of the type of move that we could see. And you can see it's very, very similar every time seeing these very routine moves in the market, which span, you know, whether it's one of these ellipses or whether it's across a couple of these channels. So the reason, the only reason I'm sharing this is um, as long as we start off with the monthly time frame and really understand what the big picture is and monthly lows and monthly moving averages and stuff, then as long as that doesn't scare us out of positions, all of these are just trading opportunities. Right? So either you take them or you don't, but it shouldn't scare you out of a position, right? And uh, because you know it's it's meaningless unless we take out, let's say, 5120, for example. So I've got the March low marked on here, 5124. So it's already front and center. I already know exactly what I'm looking for as far as it can go down to here and I'll start getting worried if it goes below that, right? So it's just really to give uh, whoever's listening and watching just some perspective in terms of what's happening today relative to what we've seen in the last three months and we've seen worse and you know in fact i was looking for 5250 tomorrow and we might get there and the reason i'm looking for 5250 is because it will be an identical move you see it says you are here an identical move where we break out of these gray channels and we come back and we retest around where these two channels cross again which is around 5124 and it gave the march lows in fact last time around so maybe that's what we get over here we'll see anyway that's it. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Sorry for taking up so much time. No, no, Cookie. It's great. Uh, oh, yeah. One thing that I would like for you to touch on before we get into the stock picks is some Bitcoin. Okay. All right. Uh, let's take a look at that. I have. I do have a chart open. I, the thing is, as I said, I do sometimes recreate some of the charts so that I can share them. I think I've got it here. Okay. So this is Bitcoin. So this is a chart that you haven't shared with in the past, but it's really just a very simplified version of one that I'm using. And uh, so you see the uptrend channel from 2000, well, when it was born, 2012 or something, when it was all, well, it was before that, wasn't it? 2009 or something. But anyway, uh, 60, uh, there's, there's, uh, let me just make it really simple, right? As, as we start off a new week and a new month, naturally, the, what you always got to think about are the two back tests, the back test on the weekly chart and the back test on the monthly chart. The back test on the weekly chart was 68.8. See, sorry, 68,950. That's the back test on the monthly chart. And on, 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 the, on the weekly chart, on the monthly, we could back test down to 65,900 and hold this breakout. And the reason why I'm calling it a back test is because it's a breakout. Right, so if I just zoom in over here, you can see this is the move up. We hold that breakout. And so we could come back down to 65,950 and hold this breakout and it would, it would look fine. Right? So that's what I'm thinking about in terms of moves down in Bitcoin and it would still be fine. I mean, the previous month's low on, uh, on Bitcoin was 60,000, 59,900 or so. So 65 still comfortably holds the previous month's low. And, and, as, and as I mentioned before with the SPY chart or the ES chart, right? The, a really simple guide to how much volatility is acceptable without getting your knickers in a bunch is, do we hold the previous month's low? And if you look at what's happened since October of last year, when we broke out at 27,000, we've held higher month's lows, even with all the ETF news, we've done that. And uptrends will do that. So they'll tend to hold a you know, higher monthly low or a higher weekly low if you're looking at a weekly time frame. And that's what you do. So I'm fine if it, even if it comes down to 60,000, but ideally it holds the breakout at 59, uh, sorry, at 65,900 and you buy the dip there. So that's what, I'm, that's what I'm looking at. I mean, I'm looking fine, honestly. I'm not worried about it. And if it ends up going a little lower, I'll just hedge the position with a short in, uh, in Bitcoin anyway. So, yeah hold the weekly and monthly supports, right? I don't know how many times we've had to say that, but um, hold the weekly and monthly supports. Mm -hmm. um, all right, let's uh, let's jump into our stock and ETF picks while we have the time. Cookie, I'm going to take over. I'm going to grab the controls from mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. 
And thank you, Cookie. Pre uh, really appreciate all You're the welcome. detailed work that you share with us and this audience. Um, you know, just I'll always appreciate your insight. Like I was saying, it's always a little different. We all we all do things differently, so it's all it's all it's always new and fresh to get your perspective, as opposed to uh, all the listeners still carrying on. Oh. I hit the wrong button. That's okay. Let's try that again. I'm sorry. I think I pressed something. I should. No, pressed. no. That was that was that was totally me. Okay. It was totally me. I hit the wrong window to share. Now we should see it. There we go. Um. So. Uh, the four of us, for those who are new, we all picked longs that we liked for this quarter. And um, with about a month out, the three of us, GP, JFDI, and myself, picked a short. And um, I, I'm happy to say I, I took the crown on the short position by 1.05%, but my long position of fresh was down 11% for the quarter. So I'm the big loser this time. Can't win them all. Won the last one. I can't win them all. So um, so there's Fresh. Uh, I said $30, not even close. Uh, so there's where I sit at roughly uh, $20.53 would have been the entry. And it's at eight, it closed for the quarter at $18.21. Um, as for our overall winner this week, Nick was running away with it, and United oh. Rentals was running away with it. Um, but at yeah. the very last moments, we had GP take it within the Woo! last. Why you killed it? Well so done. So GP would have bought Advance Auto at fifty seven dollars and eight cents. And it closed for the month at eighty five oh nine, which is a forty nine percent increase. That's pretty awesome, GP. And nice. uh, Nick, he had United Rentals at five oh five fourteen, and it closed for the month at seven twenty one eleven, which is forty two point seven five percent. Cookie chose Soxel. And beat the Soxels off of us uh, with his three <laughs> X leveraged twenty six eleven. It was disqualified, been, wasn't it? Would have so, been the buy point. So yeah. right around there, and for the month or for the quarter rather, it ended at forty six fifty three, which is a seventy eight point two percent. Now for the shorts, I already mentioned Yeti was my short. And I I came out with one point one percent over the last month uh, hasn't hasn't gone us down as far as I liked. GP chose Chevron. I should have stuck with Boeing. <laughs> yeah, you should have stuck with Boeing. You should have totally stuck with Boeing. Uh, he would have he would have shorted at one forty eight and it closed at one fifty seven seventy four. Uh, for a loss of five point nine six percent. And Nick would have shorted lemonade, and it's done and nothing. It, it's uh, it would have shorted at sixteen oh nine, closed at sixteen forty one, so down a percent, uh, a little almost two percent. So there you go. There was our quarterly picks. Cookie is the overall winner, but in non three X land, uh, we're going to give GP the check mark on that one and we'll be back uh at the end of this week on friday to give our next quarterly picks um we're gonna have we're gonna have a spaces on friday right gp uh at, yes. at market at market close gp so will be hosting back. a spaces on x we'll divulge okay. those picks then but we'll talk about the week and uh how everything's going on Friday at the close and cookie. I know that's really early for you. So uh, you you're always welcome to join us, but I don't think uh, you'll, you'll be up at that time. Obviously maybe you will. 
<laughs> I'm just losing. I can send you a I can send you a pick. Yeah, yeah. Send us a pick. Send us a pick before the close of Friday. Okay, I'll do that. And uh we we'll we'll track these for the next quarter when we talk to good old Cookie again. Um hey Cookie, uh, I, again I, I know the time change is always a bear for us and just always appreciate you jumping on. Like I was saying earlier, your perspective is so much different than ours. Everybody's perspective is different. So mm-hmm. it's always great to check in with you. It's always great to hear you explain things as thoroughly as you do. Um, so we, we just appreciate that. I, I know it's it's value to us as individuals. Uh, I shouldn't I sp- shouldn't speak for GP and Nick, but uh, it's definitely insight no. for me. Yeah. And I know I know it's great context and insight for everyone who tuned in. And speaking of tuning in, we were up to like 40 some people watching today, which is awesome. We appreciate you um, listening and watching. So, hey, the best thing that you can do for us is support the content that we put out. So like, subscribe, share what we do. We appreciate that. Uh, We do our normal podcast every Monday um, at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And we try to get Cookie on once a quarter to go over what's happened and what we what he might see for the next quarter or further out. So we appreciate the support and we appreciate you sharing. And um, as I've said a hundred times, tell a friend to tell a friend, share everything. Um, and if you found value in this, we we hope you did, and um, we appreciate that. Um, GP, uh, Nick, anything to add? Cookie, appreciate it. Appreciate your time. Hey, you're more than welcome. Thank you, thank you yeah. very much for all for all the technical analysis. It's always uh, it's always awesome to see uh, different perspectives and understanding why why people do the things they do. So it's always nice to get this clarity moment from for us because we're we're always we're in a feedback loop because it's us three normally. So it's always nice to get a a third a fourth perspective. You're very welcome, and um, yeah, I appreciate you giving me some time, giving me the time that you do um, to go through it as well. So thank you for that. Well, Cookie, it, you're you're more than welcome. Um, you, you're more than welcome to say, "Hey, uh, the quarter's too long. I want to jump in somewhere else." Um, we're, we're happy to make those arrangements happen too. I don't want, I don't want to speak for you, but um, we, we, we like having you on and we like uh, conversing with you. And a lot of times you're right. It does seem like you're talking a lot, but that's because we, we don't get a lot of your time and we want to, we want to give you as much as we can. Okay, man. Um, but thanks again to everyone, um, you know, for, for jumping in and watching this midday edition of our podcast. We greatly appreciate you. We appreciate it. And um, we will be back with a show uh, on Spaces on X. Uh, We'll all share that later, uh, Friday at the close. Uh, But thanks, guys. 